take it now, shift right. Hey everyone and welcome back. We're going to do another little project on old Ruby here. And I'm filming in the dark on purpose because we're going to be replacing those lights with some LEDs. So I'm going to get that ring off of there and get the replacement bulbs in there and we're going to see uh, what those look like in comparison. So what I'm going to do is turn my headlamp off and I will probably turn the lights on, we'll get some video of that, and then I'll change one of them real quickly, and well, I hope it's real quickly. We'll leave the other one in and see what the difference is, and if we like the look of it, we'll go ahead and change the other one. So I'm going to go pull the uh, light switch on. So I'll probably blind you here. This car has been converted to 12 volts, so... They are a bit brighter than six volt candles would be held out. My dad's 55 is about like holding two candles uh, in front of your car. They're pretty bad. All right, let me go get one of, probably change the driver's side one first just so we can have a, a pretty good comparison. See what that looks like. So these are the lights he's decided to go with. And I'm gonna try to keep you out of the shadow here. A little different looking than a regular bulb. They look, uh, they look like they're the right size, like they'll fit. So let's get one of those in there and see what it looks like. So I just walk around and put these little guys back in there. Seems like it sits a little bit higher. How, how well these are going to go in, how easily. Usually launch these one or two times across the room. Okay, brown goes there, I believe. White goes over here, I think. This, I believe, is a driving light, so we'll just uh, probably cut that or tape that off. All right, let's see if we get any juice on that one. See anything? Back you up just a hair here. All right, let me go hit the switch. Something's working on the bright switch. It does sometimes help to follow the directions. Apparently there's one of these little guys in there. LED wiring canceller. So I had to hook that up and that's what this box is here running to it. And now we have high and low beam. Simple as that. Now the thing is, will that fit in there with the canceller on there? It should. So let's kind of toss that back in there and take a look and see what it looks like. That's going to be tight fit, isn't it? Getting that back in there. Hmm. I just want to see if they're any brighter at all. They don't really seem that bright to me. Yeah, there'll be room in there, I think. They don't look that weird. Definitely need to straighten it up, though. That's going to bug me because they... Or at an angle. It's gonna bug me. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> no nut jokes on this one. Only buck jokes. Alright, let's step you back and see if we can see a difference. Oh, 
think they're changing now. Hi, the low beam. Not like it was changing to me. I don't know that it's any brighter, but it's definitely a whiter light. Someone who had owned the car prior to us had wired the headlights and the headlight switch incorrectly, so we had to take care of that. Alright, so I got the uh, passenger side headlight in there. Looks like this is ready to be buttoned up. Eventually want to change out this one for an LED as well, the driver's light, so that it doesn't look so weird. Uh, those are definitely brighter, I think, than uh, the standard beetle bulbs that were in there. The and I actually think those were halogens that were in there, too. That's what we had in there. And again, this car has been uh, converted to 12 volts. So that's a 12-volt bulb with an LED. And that's a 7 LED bulb. And I think those are significantly brighter. And that's actually the dim. So let me go turn the brights on. Don't know that you'll be able to tell the difference. Looking through the camera lens, it doesn't look any different to me. So, but the brights have a bar along the bottom that kick on. Let's see if we can get it. There's a bar right here at the bottom. So when you turn the brights on, the bar there and the bar up on top kick on. So that's kind of what they look like up close and personal. And... Uh, Pretty bright, pretty happy with those. And really when they're on, whoa, when they're on, they don't look any different than just a regular bulb. They just look like a whiter light. So I say that's a win. Well, today's task is pulling the engine out of Ruby, or 62, Beetle. Still having clutch issues on this, so there has to be something broke. Not sure what, but today's task is getting that out of there. We've got the whole car up on uh, jack stands. The joys of a lowered car. And we're going to pull the engine, see if we can find the problem, and try and get it fixed today. Need to shove it forward just a little bit, that. A little bit further. Okay, babe. Good. Yeah, just come up slow and we'll see if we can hit it, see if it hits the between bottom. the bolts of the case. Come up for, towards the front of the car just a little bit. Good. Yeah. A little bit more come up towards the car. Motorcycle jack is under it. Everything is loose. Generator is unhooked so we don't have to unhook the battery. Uh... Oil, oil sensor is unhooked, everything's unhooked, uh, fuel line, throttle cable, and then we are about, if I can get the camera to focus back there, uh, you can see it right here, we've pulled away, pretty much ready to just drop it down, just thought I'd do a quick video, show you that, if you're watching the channel, you've probably pulled a Volkswagen engine before, so four bolts, you can see one of them right here. And then one on the other side, and then one directly below it, and one below on the other side. So they're pretty easy to get out. The hard part on a lowered car is getting the car up high enough. So I may have to bring the car up just a little bit more. It's going to be close. Might be able to tip it forward once we get it down, but we're pretty much ready to come down uh, out of the car. Thought I'd mention real quick why I've got the opportunities. People are going to ask what this is up here. For those that don't know, that is... Uh, Fire Slayer, there's another company that I have in my bus called Blaze Cut, and that is a fire suppression system. So should a fire break out, that will melt and actually release a fire extinguisher type chemical and put the fire out. Might be able to see it a little better on this side. Let's see if I can get the camera in there. So you can see we're tipped just a little bit downhill, so we have to bring the jack up just a little bit to break it loose, but it's pretty much ready to drop down. Well, there's the problem with the car not shifting. Yeah. That is the broken piece 
off the pressure plate. I don't know if I can get the camera down in there or not. Let me try. Yeah, I can almost get it. There's metal shavings in there. So that piece should be attached right back here. I'll show you on one that we're getting ready to put in where it should go. This is the one we're getting ready to put in, and it's this piece right here is actually broken off the pressure plate. Kind of shredded it. Might be able to see it a little better from, from this side. So I'm not sure what where it failed yet. We'll get it out there. You can kind of see the metal shavings laying down in there now too. That'll make it not shift right. Well, it's not as damaged as I thought it would be, but uh, clearly a product failure. Look like it hurt that too badly. We ended up using a motorcycle jack that we picked up at Harbor Freight and pulled the engine and there's a pin there and there and these little stands were inside there. And they're not bolted or anything, they just sit in there. So we took those out and that dropped it down quite a bit. But that thing worked out awesome. Highly recommend it. I'll put a link down in the description. I'm gonna go check it out. Noise alert! need to change too. Well, we've made a couple changes to this. The clutch, uh, Aaron decided he did not like the rake that I had on his single wheel. So we still got the slam looked going on. But he has put a lift on our original bracket by using just a piece of like scaffolding pipe that I had kind of kicking around and raised it up above the overrider. So, and as you, as we lower the car, you know, so the, the car will go down, that will actually lower this portion of it and it's still going to give it a little bit of a rake. So... That has been modified. Uh, we had to, we have Gabriel air shockers on the back because we're cheap. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but we've added a, uh, let me turn the light on and see if I can get a better shot of that. There we go. We've added a gauge, let's see here, little compressor and a power switch. These two, oh, can't see my hand. These two buttons here, here, and here are just fake. They're just the screws that kind of hold it on there. It has a gauge on it, tells us where we are on pressure, a valve to uh, let the air out, and then this kicks on the compressor, and that airs up those air shockers. Ow! Just racked my head as I came out of the car. And then the other thing we've done, still got my flash on, is added LED bulbs to the front 
So both the headlights have been changed out, and we went ahead and changed this one out too because it just looked kind of goofy. So I'm going to take it for a test drive and see how I like that. Uh, the reason we went with that uh, gauge and system there in the dash was because we had to use a bicycle hand pump to pump it up again. We have <laughs> air shocks on it. This is the true redneck way to do it without paying like 2000 bucks to make it happen. So it's a slammed car and it cost, I think those air shocks were about 40 bucks. And that thing up front was about $160. So the compressor sits up front in the front of the car. So basically for $200, you can have air ride, poor man's air ride. So let's go take it for a drive. Make sure the clutch is good and adjusted well. And we've got everything good to go. This is going to Artie Fest, which is a festival in a little town just a few miles away from us uh, next weekend. So got to get it where we can get it there. Let's go for a ride. Look at that sunset. It's incredible. It's like there's fire in the sky. Check out those headlights. The other thing that we didn't get back on the car was uh, tailpipes. You can probably hear that. Uh, so <laughs> Aaron said, I actually kind of like it that way. I can't find what gear I'm in here. So we're going to do tapered pipes on it and see what we can come up with. Let's go down and see if we can hit this bridge down here and get some of that sunset. I missed most of it, and this bridge is only about two miles from us. So just when I pulled out was when it was flashing over. Kind of stinks. Sounds good though, doesn't it? Sounds like VW Nut 1967's lawnmower redneck tractor. whitest light I've ever seen. Check out what those uh, grills do. They actually split the light. The light is so bright. Put different uh, headlight grills, headlight covers on them. Had kind of a screen mesh on it before. After I put the LEDs in, we went with those. Really splits the light up. Kind of creates a unique lighting. Thanks everyone for joining me on this adventure on a few things that we changed on old Ruby. The headlights, the air ride, the clutch pressure plate and throw out bearing. The old pressure plate will be used to make a toilet paper holder. If you haven't seen me do that, I'll try to remember to put a link right here. Please keep those comments coming. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. looking awesome. I'm really liking the color choice that you chose. Good job. Hey, you know what we're going to call that truck? The Roadrunner. Okay.
part right here on the ends. And for right now, so they, so they will look pretty. Scoot back just a little bit here. You get oh. right here. It's ripping off. Well, it's okay. Come here for a minute. Hit this area. I have to get, get right it. here. He, he's good. You're good. It's his. It's his body. Oh, I'm it's, good. It's his body job. That's good. Awesome job. I had to get where it went. Um, actually, trick. Yep. Good job. I think you're a little close, but it's all right. I have to cover up all the rust spots. Yeah, and you may want to let it just kind of dry for a little bit and then come back at it a second time. Yeah, let it dry and then we'll do another coat. Mama, can you get another piece of cardboard?